Welcome back, everyone. Count Krista, welcome down to the studio. It's a great pleasure to be here. Great pleasure to be here. Now, uh, of course, we are going to start with a 2v2 uh, showcase in just a bit. But yep. before we do that, reactions to yesterday. It was a great day, a fantastic day. There were, there were some upsets, for sure. We had quite a few of our players uh, battling it out into the uh, the second rounds, at least. What we haven't seen so far is uh, something that Midge likes to talk about, some of those stamina plays. So far, a lot of these games have been being over in two rounds. I'm really excited to see, especially in the finals tomorrow, when we move towards uh, that kind of five, best of five grudge match going all the way, I wouldn't wonder. What we also saw yesterday, and what I hope we're going to see a bit more of today, is some naval significance. We saw some pretty serious naval combats, especially in that last game yesterday evening. And with what we've got coming up for you uh, earlier today, I think we're definitely going to get a lot more of that sweet ship-on-ship -ship action, getting some serious combats going on around in the Southeast Asia map. I think one of the things also to take note of today is that yesterday we had some players... Well, First of all, it was the first day for everyone to be here physically playing. Sure. Hopefully some of those uh, early game jitters have kind of calmed down. Mm -hmm. If you're still in the competition, you know, you're still in the competition. And hopefully everyone's warmed up, up a bit, figured out, Definitely. you know, how things work around here, how the computers control all of that. Kind Absolutely. Of stuff. What we also saw is that the players have not figured out how everything works yet. We had quite a few games yesterday which were in, on paper, it should have played out very similar, but it just didn't. We had radical divergence in the kind of play we saw, especially in Across the Rhine. We've had some more static, limited pushes, contained contained combats, but then we've had some where it just blows it wide open. It just goes all over the place, and we have that constant micro mm -hmm. struggle all the way uh, from Cologne, all the way to Paris with that unending conflict. And I think the divergence amongst the different ways that these games are playing out, it really speaks to the, uh, honestly, how great the Across the Rhine map is. I'm sure we'll see more of that later today, as well as uh, the kind of innovations that we're seeing from the players, which is frankly a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, you went on such a lovely uh, <laughs> long rant that I forgot what I was going to say, but I'm sure it was very insightful. So rather than talk about my very insightful, uh, well, insights, uh, we're going to talk instead about the fact that of course, the players have been here for a few days, and <laughs> the first day they were here, we well, we asked them some hard-hitting questions. We asked them not uh, some not so hard-hitting questions, but also, and I feel like this is the most important bit. We asked mm. them to actually draw a portrait of one of the other players, and we're going to show you the first of one of those segments now that we very wittily oh yes uh, call <coughs> our art of iron. I don't know what to start with, basically. I think I will just start with the shape of the face. Hmm? <sighs> okay. What shape does the head have? Okay, the eyes look a bit scuffed. So get his hair right, the side part. How do you draw a nose? <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit uh, head heavy, the picture, that's why... Uh... And we can't forget the beard. It's like a bit shaggy. There is meme art into this. Okay, the hairline was like very straight, but curly. And... The eye. I don't think I got the nose right, but it's fine. Looks a bit like Marge Simpson, you know? Like the... I'm so sorry. This is kind of all I got. I would not recognize him. Kind of like this. And then stick body. Honestly, I think I did a pretty good job. I tried it. You know, in the beginning, it, started, it looked good, you know, like the head form I liked and the eyes. Like, I mean, there were maybe different sizes, but this one looks cool. But then it just went downhill. I am not happy. And it's the best I could do.
If you want to see our other um, players and their drawings, you'll have to stick around until tomorrow where, when we're going to reveal part two. In the meantime, of course, feel free to guess on who our players were actually drawing, which, uh, <laughs> Ken Christo, leads me to my second point um, before we get to the game, and that is that we have several competitions going on uh, at the moment where you can win both Sweet Sweep Commanders in Conflict merch, but also really cool gear from Steel Series. Um, some of those are taking place, you should have links in Twitch chat, but some of them are exclusive for our Discord. And here's a bit of a secret. Mm -hmm. Some of them are specifically exclusive to our uh, subscribers mm -hmm. here on Twitch. So if you are subscribing and want to have a really easy chance to win something, Instantly join our Discord, connect your Twitch account to that, uh, and it will give you access to the subscriber channel and the subscriber competition channel so we can give away all of the merch <laughs> that we have stored up that we're like, someone needs to be wearing <laughs> this because I don't want to be the only one with one of no, these. No, I mean, they're, I mean, I've got to say, come on, guys. Very. They're pretty they're good. Very nice. Who wouldn't want one of these? Yeah, so that is most of my spiel. Uh, if you like what we do, please support us by following and subscribing on Twitch. Now, let's have a look at the mm. fight cards. We are first going to look at, uh, well, Team One. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, the historic uh, duo of Tommy K and Absolute Habibi. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy K, at this point, of course, unknown entity. True, true. I mean, he's been in some of the practice rounds. Sure. Uh, we know we've been having, uh, he's been having a couple of back and forths with people, but uh, he's, you know, not quite, you know, you, you can practice as much as you want, but I mean, once you get down here, you're in the big leagues now, Tommy, and uh, we'll see how that actually matches up once we'll, uh, the we'll, medal hits the we'll, fan. We'll see if uh, Tommy can fight the nerves. Of course, Absolute Habibi, we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So he should have experience on um, in the format. However, we are playing on a, a new map that we haven't seen so far. We today. are indeed. Habibi did have some good naval plays that we saw yesterday. Hopefully some of that skill will translate into today. Uh, I do want to draw attention to Tommy's quote. He thinks he made these guys, which I well, mean, you know, he better not lose to I, I like that because it means that regardless of if he wins or loses, he has, you know, he can claim that he won. Oh, yes. They absolutely. are going up against the super duo of Boko and, and Golden Spatula. Mm -hmm. um, Apparently, Tommy's too old for micro. I, like, <laughs> sure. Uh, also, I strongly disagree with hashtag uh, Denmark best country, but you know, that's definitely something a loser would say. Tommy, uh, please, uh. Uh, please defeat uh, Bokun as quickly as possible. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, but okay. apparently, Golden has been having nightmares till morning. Hopefully, they've been at least instructive uh, about the gameplay coming up. I mean, I chat, you can admit, We've all had the occasional dream about Paradox Games. I actually wanted a campaign based on that dream. So, oh. you know, don't let your dreams stay dreams. You can you can turn them yep. into reality. So, l before we get to the matchup here, of course, we should mention that we are playing on uh, Nanshin uh, Ron. We are indeed. Which is kind of like the snuck in 2v2 yes. uh, map for the mod currently. However, mm. there are some special rules. That some tweaks. What, what, what's the tweaks? So the main thing we've done is we've dramatically increased the amount of military industry that each of our players are going to be starting with. We've cranked it, I believe, about 3x, 4x what they start with. They now have 20 military factories each. Of course, this being a slightly less serious competition, meaning we wanted to just throw things to the max. Let's get crazy. Let's get wild. Let's let our players be able to afford whatever it is they want and throw it at the opponent team here. The other thing we've done, and this was in consultation with some of our players, is we have decided that there are going to be no subs. You don't build subs, you don't use subs on this Gentleman's map. Gentlemen's agreement. Because really, if you're going to have a huge naval invasion at sea, it's much more exciting if you can see them. Uh, yeah. If they're all under the water, it just doesn't quite do it for us. So we're going to have no subs on this map for this one. The only and we're subs see how that comes. are the ones in Twitch chat. It's true, it's true. Those yeah. ones winning all that uh, merch. With that said, we are now going to go to my 100% absolute true oh. favorite casting pair, oh. Midgeman and Adaway. Take it away. This way. Hello, everybody, and <laughs> welcome on in. Small, small technical difficulty there for Adaway, <laughs> having his headset on the wrong way around. But we are here. Adaway, how are you feeling about this 2v2 matchup that we've I got going on here? I'm very excited about this 2v2 match. Yeah, and, so 
you know, this is this is Boku and versus Tommy. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah, it can get any bigger than that. It does point. not get better than this as well. I'm also really happy to be back in the casting seat, also with one of my favourite people, someone who got me very much into Hoy, uh, sitting here next to Adaway. It's going to be a really fun game. Just to remind people who maybe didn't catch the pre-show, Nashinron has also had a few rebalances, even for our 1v1 uh, scenario. We've rebalanced some of where the resources are allocated on the map, meaning there's more resources available, meaning industry should perform better, serious. and also navies yeah, should perform rooms. better. Look and <laughs> hear them shouting at each other. Look, oh, Christo's even jumping in. Golden really getting that confidence, those nightmares. <laughs> racking Golden, it. really the favorite of the casters, if yeah. we're all being honest uh, here, oh, you know, really? right from day one. Yes. Absolutely, he, 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 he basically <laughs> taught me this mod on, uh, That's on true. Wednesday. Uh, Golden was my, my, he was my golden boy. I, I was well, really hoping. You've been taught by Leonard. That's, that's true, but Golden was the person that uh, was giving me an absolute headache. Uh, as yes. a caster for, mo <laughs> for most of the day and also the mod creator because he's going, oh yeah, I found this issue and this issue and I, ca I can break the game here and break the game here and I was like, please stop, I, 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 just need, to <laughs> I need help. Um, and no, I was really hoping he'd get, uh, get through. So I, th I think we're going to be an interesting... Oh, not, not, even, not even, you know, you know, let us see what they're saying, no, Tommy no, and no, Habibi there. No, Secret no. plans being formulated, <laughs> trash talk <laughs> flying from both sides. Ah, oh, to be to be a fly on the wall as we are right now is a, a unique scenario. But speaking of the scenario, what do you think we're going to see here from the players? What 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 faction choices for each nation? Of course, we should go over that. Uh, team Tommy is on the Axis powers, and Team Bo are currently on the Allied powers. Th there's also a little bit of a meme that's been going on here with the name of Team Bo. Uh, they are currently named. Mum lover. So this right. is a track to a recent Tommy K stream where he was being stream sniped in Steel Division 2 by a man <laughs> named Mum lover. So they are hoping to put the fear into him by giving them the fl uh, giving him that flashback. But let's see if Tommy can be uh, stronger than his uh, <laughs> than his stream sniping rage. No, no, Look at this you're screen. Bad. Oh, I love this. We get to see both at the same time. Beautiful. <laughs> right. So you hear the full extent of our map. So we have, of course, the Ad Nations of the South in Australia and yep. New Zealand. We have a League of Neutrality in the centre, which is essentially nothing. Uh, they're holding no troops uh, going to be stopping them from advancing. And then the Axis powers here, quite quite uh, condensed, quite contiguous mm -hmm. in, in Indochina. Um, and then they're going to be trying to capture the victory point in the centre of the map. Uh, one over here in Borneo, in Brunei. One down here at Batavia. And one... Uh, over in Manila, over here in the Philippines. Yes, uh, just an extra thing. Uh, the Axis do have Taiwan, so they do have that island base up there. And also the Allies have Christmas Island, which is a really sneaky set of points. Christmas Island and also the Cocos Island here, where you can actually base some naval operations uh, and invade some of these key victory points. Of course, the victory points being uh, Batavia, Brunei, and Manila. Yes, yeah, so we got. I mean, we have Manila, which is very, very well, quite close to the Axis powers, and then uh, one victory point, which is relatively close to the Ally, with that being uh, Batavia. Now, a key thing about Batavia is it is very resource heavy. So, despite <laughs> being closer to the Ally, substantially so, um, it's something that the Axis are not going to want to give up because there's quite a lot of valuable stuff there um, yep. for them to exploit should they get a hold of Java. But it's just only a very short distance across there. You know, only a paratrooping within paratrooping distance. Yes. Um, paratroopers may well play a, an important role in this in this uh, in this on this map particularly. Uh, because there's such a no. wide area they need to they need to cover. God is with us. Allah is with us. <laughs> um, just a, a a wonder to the streaming studio. Is there any chance that we can uh, tap in and out of what they're saying? <laughs> because I could just hear this little murmur of uh, of the team voices, and I'd love to just be able to focus on my good friend Josh. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> Raise the focus to keep up with their, yeah, with their exactly, plays. Exactly. So let's check out uh, what they're doing on builds initially. Um, over on uh, your screen, got the Axis powers. Pacific Empire Doctrine, so gone for the Japanese build. Yeah, we're probably going to see the Japanese Navy here. Me and Tommy were talking about this heavily in the pre-show. Uh, he has his eyes set on that powerful Navy. And now with the map rebalance, where there's more fuel uh, allocation around the map, it becomes far more viable to keep those heavy ships out longer. Um, the real question is what are the allies going to pick and they're actually not revealing that to us right away they're going yeah, for an industry, for industry to start with this is, this is the real decision that i think we've seen in multiple games is whether you go with the industry focuses to start with or you go straight into your pick of the faction mm -hmm. it can it can depend on how soon you feel like you need the the xp that comes with the with the faction choices or if you're happy to do more uh, build up with industry 
uh, going to the dockyards there, I think, for the uh, for the Allied focus. So really trying to make sure they get the early early lead on dockyards. Wow. Uh, the Axe is focusing elsewhere at the moment. And that is a lot of convoys being produced. Yes, so I think this is to keep um, their dockyards from being idle right now uh, whilst they wait to get XP to design a ship and then probably refit something. Uh, a real uh, Leonard tactic that I saw was as soon as you have the XP to do so, redesign the light, cru uh, light cruisers when you get them so that they can be uh, spotting ships, like have them completely yes. have um, spotting planes and become almost like mini spotting plane aircraft carriers. Um, but obviously they haven't got a fleet yet to be able to do that with. Yeah, and over on the Axis side, it's, it's in a, essentially exactly the same in terms of a production. We've got convoys being built. We've got infantry equipment coming out here um, with the maximum number of factions they have currently. Uh, so we're waiting to see here as, as they build their industry, what they spec into in terms of different equipment. Uh, some artillery here being queued up in support equipment for the Axis side. Um, artillery is a real decision they make whether or not to go for artillery. And there, are, there have been players that have eschewed artillery entirely and just gone for yep. uh, tanks, for example. Yes. On this map, though, tanks are going to be slightly less, uh, less advantageous because, of course, they have to move between islands, which means yes. every time they move, they're going to be at risk of being caught by an enemy surface fleet, not submarines, of course. Yes. Um, but it's more, it's more of a, a risky thing to do. Paratroopers might come into it um, and uh, regular old infantry divisions. Um, yes, one of the main things I want to point out here is what the Allied uh, players have done. They've instantly locked in their first uh, military staff, and they've gone for Ernest King. That's how they're getting their Navy XP. And boy, is it an in, uh, a large amount of gain. They're really racking up that daily experience gain right now. 0.4 there for Ernest King, plus 15%. So in total, it's, it's a 0.46, so almost a 0.5 per day, uh, which is really going to help them when they start doing that Navy setup. I don't think we've seen anything similar here. Over. Nope, we have. They've both gone for a uh, uh, Navy advisor. Yep. And we've got the, uh, look at this. Shig one. Shigetaro Shimada on the Axis side, uh, the Japanese look at those Admiral. Benefits as yeah, well. Yeah, so not only do they get the plus 14 Naval Experience game, which is the same as what uh, the Allied uh, Naval Admiral has got, mm -hmm. uh, they've also got a series of bonuses to capital ship attack and armor and screen attack and defense. Uh, so there's a ra variety of combat bonuses there, uh, which are going to prove uh, potentially very useful um, and give them an edge. We are, I mean, you, we don't often see naval combat without the influence of submarines. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this is this is just traditional surface naval warfare. So they're going to have to have well, screens um, and naval bombers might come into it as well yes. from, from the air to try and dominate air zones. Absolutely. Um, and that planes can move much quicker than ships. Uh, so we may well see some build in that direction. Uh, so you have the Axis gone for doctrines yet? They have not. Yeah, so one so of the... Right, they've got 100 XP now, the Axis. Now they've done the, uh, their own Japanese uh, focus. Yes. The allies are not doing that currently. It's still uh, focusing on the industrial side of things. Yes, one of the big things uh, that was changed this morning in the mod is that both nations now are fixed to closed economy which means they have more resources at the start as well to really get that economy going. Uh, okay. um, which is also why, if you're looking at the resource map mode, uh, the League of Neutrality is red uh, when looking at the uh, two uh, the nations like with these amounts. It's because of that closed economy. We found out that uh, there was a little bit of a sneaky tactic going on yesterday where people were trading with e each other even though they were at war and uh, ruining the other person's resource amounts. Seems Yeah, that seems uh, unideal. Yes, um, unideal. So we have, we have uh, fixed that from happening. Um, still nothing. I think actually not, not, not entirely a historical. I did read recently that apparently when uh, Britain and France were at war in the 18th century, uh, Britain, most of Britain's grain imports came from France. Oh, really? Interesting. So they must have uh, worked out that if France stopped selling that grain, their economy right. would crash. Well, exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, wh we haven't got an allied pick here. What do you suppose we're going to see? It depends on the kind of naval fleet they want. The US have some very strong marine-related techs. Um, naval invasions are going to cause, or going to be potentially be quite a, a big contention point. Um, so they may well spec into the, the USMC side. Lords are probably under quite, quite any, uh, well, it's two, two carriers being created there for the uh, Allied nations. Yep. Um, but it, there are other options, so it'll be interesting to see what they go for. Um, at the moment, they're obviously happy with industry. I think you know, when I was on with uh, Tommy casting yesterday, he was he was very sort of keen to optimize the timing at which you've got your XP. Yes. He, he, in, his, in his mind, having the XP early when you're not going to spend it on designing the right template because you haven't got the right fighter uh, templates unlocked mm -hmm. um, is essentially a wasted time. That's time you could be building up your industry. So they're following that, that plan here and, and gone for the industry stuff early and they're going to probably switch over to the... Um, to the uh, 
uh, faction pick once they've got the right tech research for their planes. Now, in a lot of training, uh, what the word on the street has been is that the Soviets are the play here for this map because of the submarines. You can just kind of lock mm. people out of the islands. But because of the gentleman's agreement, that isn't going to happen. Exactly. So I don't think we're going to see a Soviet pick here unless someone went for the paratrooper drop here. I think it's going to be the US Marine Corps or we're going to see something happen with the Commonwealth, uh, possibly the Commonwealth 8th Army because of that big Medera Mediterranean fleet. Uh, which also get a carrier and a battleship. Yeah, two battleships and an aircraft carrier. So the extra battleships there is interesting. That's different to the what you get from the US from the US tree, it's more mm -hmm. battleship focused. Mm -hmm. Shore bombardment can be a thing, and also they are they are just big ships that can yeah. kill little ships. Um, Absolutely. You know, screens do not do well against capital ships. Correct, correct. And also you get some pretty decent uh, infantry divisions which will do well in this uh, area. O obviously, as well, you do get a, an elite paratrooper division as well. So it, I think. Commonwealth 8th Army is probably the better way to go, honestly, unless you're going for those marine landings, which we will see. Let's check in on our players' own perspectives. We'll start, oh, with, yes, start with Tommy K. We can see each of their screens and see what they're looking at. Um, but, uh, that's actually Boken in the, in the picture. Yeah, that? they've put Bo in the picture. They're, what, they're really trying to bamboozle us here. Um, so, yes, uh, Tommy is currently weighing up doctrinal decisions, probably discussing with Habibi, uh, much like uh, Tommy and uh, sorry, Bo and Golden are doing there. What do you think about doctrinal pick? What do you think we'll see? Well, again, that's tied very closely to what you pick as your navy. Yes. Um, there's no point taking carrier-focused doctrines if you don't have any carriers. Um, so we'll be led very. I mean, Tommy is probably you know looking at that to assess, considering whatever what, what pick they're going for. I imagine they have an idea of what pick they're going for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, what will be the best doctrine for that? This is now Habibi's perspective. I think we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so he's probably looking at production. Um, and it's just a case, obviously with 2v2, uh, new for this, this round, if you haven't uh, heard already, there are two players on each team, which means that we're going to have, you know, they're probably going to divvy up different areas of operation Absolutely. or different responsibilities in terms of production or managing the air force. And with two of them, it's going to be easier for them to manage things, but they've got to communicate well. They've got to talk to each other well and make sure Absolutely. that they cover the whole map properly. Yes, Absolutely. Well, they're already locked. I the, the axes are already locked into the uh, Japanese tree. So you're ex you're, you're gonna s uh, on on they? Yes, they're already into the Japanese tree. So we're probably gonna see carriers. So I think we'll probably see base strike as uh, the doctrinal pick. I I, I th you could go fleeting being, but I think to get the most bang for buck on carriers, I think we might see base strike. Yes. Um, more more so than the other one. The so real the real question is what go bow the and uh, gold gold perspective on the allied yes. team and see how they're getting on. Ah, look, they've also got Bo Cohen on their camera. <laughs> Just, they're really trying to get the Bo Cohen uh, screen time up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Clearly, we're not meeting a quota of some sort. But uh, yes, I'm glad that this one is correct. I think they're currently just I, they're just ma marking out where they're planning. We can see some conversation going on. Yeah, there's a lot there. of discussions here between, between both players. Unlike mm -hmm. when it's 1v1 and we just get someone staring into the screen and... They do a lot. They do a lot of their thinking almost on the screen, and we can see it yes. as, they, as they mouse around different menus. And you can see what they're considering. Obviously, Bo and uh, and Golden there are just talking to each other, so uh, we're not privy to what they're saying. Um, so we'll see how that develops in terms of their strategy. Uh, more industry text here for the allies being done. They're still avoiding p picking their. They, they, no, they they haven't picked. No, so so, it, so it's Tommy Tide that has picked their their, yes. their faction. I was yes. wrong. I was wrong earlier. Tommy Tide has picked their faction early. Yes. Uh, so he's going. He's uh, going for the earlier pick there, but the. Industry techs here for the Allies. They've gone one dockyard and two mills. Uh, so, this, so it's a more balanced approach um, to both sides. Uh, no Civ focuses yet. Yep. And we'll wait to see what they pick in terms of their faction. They're not actually doing a focus at the moment. Oh, have you just picked one? <laughs> yes, they have. Final <laughs> Arms Industry <laughs> expansion. This adds no, 12 new head. mills to the, uh, to the Allied side. Pretty no, hefty no, focus indeed. Oh, yes, absolutely. So. The, the one element that I really love about this 2v2 scenario, and I don't, I don't think Hoy happens to get played in this way, in uh, just generally, even outside of this mod very often, and that is in person, sat next to your teammate, being able to talk about what you're doing. Normally it's over a Discord call yeah. or, over, or over other sorts of implementation over the internet. Not normally would you be sat next to someone staring at two other people across the room and playing this in LAN. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, on the Speed5 Discord if you guys have actually played Hoi in LAN together. And I would love to hear what the experience sounds like because there is just a different energy when you're able to talk tactics to the person sat right next to you. Yeah, it's a real different dynamic and also the, the psychological warfare 
clear between both teams as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the f what, them them being in the room with you to trash talk to you afterwards. Absolutely. If you, if you make a mistake. Just <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. Really dimension. I got very excited for a second then because over here on uh, the Axis side, they have three divisions here with a uh, tank and lightning symbol that I got very excited at what. What they might contain uh, it is it is just infantry. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I imagine this mind is what games. Their planning is the uh, the dot tank division will, in, in time, perhaps have tanks in it, um, or maybe it's just a complete ruse to uh, to fool their opponents. Um, they are queuing up a lot of those tank divisions at the moment, which don't include any tanks. Yeah, the paratroopers are also not paratroopers in their in their build, and their MP divisions are actually MP divisions. This is very very interesting. <laughs> the paratroopers are just. 20 wits. That's just a regular division of infantry. Yeah, uh, and you know, hey, this, it, if the mind games have to happen on this level, the mind games have to happen on this level. It's probably just in, in case the, uh, the others hear them, they can talk about a division without... Oh, that's interesting, because there's obviously going to be the verbal component, they just go, oh yeah, I've got these paratrooper divisions, they're actually your infantry divisions, but if Bo hears that, they're thinking, they're building paratroopers, we need to make sure we've got a good air game. Yeah, that's interesting because if you're in a situation where your opponents can hear what you're saying, yeah. So you start, so you name your units in code, yeah. So they think you're talking about marines, yeah. But it's mountaineers or yeah. it's paratroopers. That's, that's so. A, that's a really interesting idea that I love. They might actually be that that <laughs> that many <laughs> levels deep in the in, in the misdirection. That knowing these guys, it would not put I would not put it past them uh, for that to be the case. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Obviously, let's take a look. Both the industries now kind of even at the moment. No one's really... I actually scratch that. The allies are whole 10 mill factories ahead right now. Uh, yeah, that's just, that's just from the focuses because the <laughs> Axis took the uh, faction pick early and the allies did more industry. So they have that lead on, on, on industry and mil mills, yep. which means that those military factories, having got them earlier, are going to be working the whole way through the game for those extra... Well, we're 15 minutes in now, so mm -hmm. yeah, if you imagine... 20, 30 minutes of mill production is going to be a sizable amount of equipment and that's not being built by the Axis, it is being built by the Allies. Yeah, absolutely. There is a hundred days left before we actually see combat. What do you What do you think we're going to see? Do you, ha do you have any predictions of who's going to get where first or who's going to be aiming for what? Are we going to see a stalemate over the island and uh, get Batavia as the main battleground? Yeah. Or uh, now that there's this rebalance to where the resources is, do you think there's going to be more of a mindset to go for them? Yeah, I think, I think obviously Manila is going to Almost certainly fall to the to the Axis. Um, it's, it's super close. Um, I don't think it's quite within power drop range, but they can get there quite quickly on the invasion. It's inside the same the same tile as well um, yes. as, as the as the, uh, the share coast of, of Indochina, which means that if you're trying to do a naval intercept, you, you're having to cross an additional na naval tile to, to get there in the first place. Yes. So um, and then it almost certainly goes to the to the Axis. I think I think in some ways the geography favours the Axis a bit because of that because yes. although. Batavia is down here, but very close to this island here. It's it's quite a long way away from the from the Australian mainland, which means in terms of supply, a lot of it will be can come through this port, um, and it is quite possible to get down here quite quickly as the as the Axis. Um, it's much easier for the Axis to get to Batavia than it is for the Allies to get to Manila. Manila. Yes, uh, and then of course Brunei in the middle will be probably Axis early on again, quite close to the Axis. Um, but in terms of Supply. It's a, it's, there's a little bit of an element of sun and bloom in here, which is supplies will be a really big, a really big yeah, issue absolutely. Uh, through the, through the game because building up is fine if you can supply it, and if you can't, you're going to be in lots of trouble. Yeah, totally. Do you want to know a little tactic for this map that I got taught by Leonard? Because we we had a little game on this map, didn't we? Me and you. Yes, we did. Um, with I had Leonard as a commander, and you had Golden Spatula as a yes. commander, and they were teaching things. So something I learned, and what Leonard made me do was I, I spawned out a load of one width cavalry, uh, two width cavalry divisions. Yes. Loads and loads of them. Because apparently, if once you've landed on territory, if you sub uh, assign uh, units to it on a garrison order, they'll automatically go and cap it for you and then guard the port. Wow, so, okay, yeah, so that's just automated. Yeah, so you could automate, once you've done the landing, if, there's an, if your landing is then not contested, you can just automate the capping and just take your eye off it and go focus a different front. Right. So that's why, like, all of my my dominant infantry was on this uh, 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 on uh, on Java and focusing the the sort of the micro around there while you were finding me with the micro and how I managed to capture all this land because I'm giving away the secrets of the war here and I hope no players are listening. But it's like essentially you can automate the capture of such a wide territory and it makes this map uh, kind of a bit more manageable. Yeah, and on that's that one of those things that you'll do. Particularly if you do this map, if we see it later on in a 1v1 scenario, yes. those kinds of tricks are going to be really important to the players because the map is so big. <laughs> in a 2v2, they, they might have the ability to, to cover both things manually 
Um, and they, obviously, I imagine they can do it more efficiently than the, than the AI script that, that uh, governs garrisons can, can do like that. Yes. Um, but it's something we might see a, more, a lot more of potentially in the, uh, in the 1v1s if this comes up, uh, as I imagine it will do at some point, uh, either later today or tomorrow in the final. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We do also have a community voted for 2v2 to come tomorrow, which I'm yeah. sure you will see polls for it in chat where you get to pick what players are playing. However, if those players are in the final, they do have the option to turn you down. We don't, obviously, otherwise they might be expected to play, you know, seven matches in one day, which could even test uh, the most skilled player. Uh, yeah. But you can see here on the on the Axis side, you can see planes, uh, naval invasions being, or naval invasions being uh, sent out here towards Borneo. Uh, there's nothing to qu in quite the same way on the uh, Allied side at the moment. Just flick over to show the Allied perspective. No orders at the moment. They've got some divisions out here, paratroopers out here on um, on Christmas Island, close to. Are they Sargent. actually paratroopers? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Are they actually? Uh, they paratroopers? are. Okay, they are, they are ten, actually paratroopers. Ten with paratroopers for the Allies here. Uh, I imagine they're producing mm -hmm. transport planes. They are. They are twelve on transport planes. That's oh, a lot wow. of transport planes. Yes, because of course you need a larger amount you of need, transport planes. You need planes a lot of transport planes to, to transport divisions. As, as mm. I found out to my detriment in, in the game we played on uh, on Wednesday when I tried to launch paratroopers and uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't fly because they didn't, didn't have, have enough, enough transport planes. planes. Ah yes, that was uh, that was a change that was put in. Uh, speaking of, let's have a look at just the logistics of each nation. Uh, currently uh, there are fighter and CAS that are down for the Axis. Uh, but they'll start crawling back to sub-optimal amount of artillery and support equipment as well, which means they are using that in their divisions. And then if we go and take a look at the Allies as well, that logistics standpoint just looks so much better. Like, there's not as many deficits. But, notably, there doesn't seem to be any fighters in production. Yeah, I think I think that's mainly a result of the Axis having uh, queued a lot of divisions up to be produced, and the Allies don't have any actually in the queue currently. Ah, um, which is okay. where I think a lot of that deficit's coming from um, as, they, as they build up. Yes, we're edging ever so close to war now. 21 days. The invasion plans are ready and going. We're seeing multiple pronged attacks. Got some, got some logistic problems there for the Axis, though. 33% uh, supply fulfillment. Yep. They do have the ability in the decisions menu to commandeer civilian trains. Yes. Which I think will, will fix that. At the moment, their problem is they need six trains. They've got two. <laughs> uh, they can yes. commandeer uh, a bunch from the event that gives them 15 units of train. That will solve that. They haven't clicked that yet. I don't uh, know why they haven't clicked that yet. Is it just a small oversight? They're going to notice that, hopefully. They could um, do. Uh, the Allies have just done that decision, in fact. Um, they're now 100% uh, fulfillment. They've got 32 trains in stockpiles. They only need five. Supply yep. will be will be an issue, um, particularly naval supply on this map, obviously, due to the, its very uh, archipelago nature. Yep. Um, and so managing that is going to be a key part of who, who wins this game. Yep. And we have had a uh, command pick as well. I, I don't know if you mentioned it with Launching the, U with the uh, U.S. Marine Corps being dropped in for the Allies. Power drops the there allies. from Paradox the Allies going. in progress. We've got a number, no, a handful of days left before the war starts. Yep, it is literally five days. You can count it down with me if you like. Uh, but we are about to see this combat take place. The speed has yep. gone down. Two Over speed on the three. Axis side, uh, NATO invasion is in progress. They're both those naval, naval for the Axis and airdrops for the Allies, the two Complete different modes of capture. Yep, and also the Allies only focusing on the one VP thus far. It, this is interesting. Yes, it's the better VP. It's the one that you definitely want. But at the same time, you need at least two of them to win this. Absolutely, yeah. This so is Tommy K's perspective now for the viewers to see as we move into the start of this war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He will I am sweep looking forward. south, you think, through Malaya? Yeah, I feel like they really want to grab that port in Singapore as well. Uh, just get themselves closer to the retaking of Batavia. We have had the paratroop troopers land, and these aren't your, your your normal one width sort of paratrooper spam paratroopers. These are a solid division, ten width at the very least, and they are now being microed around the Java Island. Their um, front lines being deleted. This Moving is the planes, they he might try and power drop his way onto Borneo, uh, straight, straight from uh, straight from Java if he can manage it. Yes, that's what we're going to try and see. It's the wrong side of the island, but nonetheless, it's, it's not pretty launching. good. It's, it's launched. It's it launched. launched now. Yeah, yep. there they go. So one thing about Borneo is the uh, air, airfield placement is on this southern side. Uh, so if they do capture that, it will be uh, useful. We are seeing those naval landings now coming in from the Axis as well. Also, notably, there is a power drop onto the, the Claw Island over here, <laughs> which is one of those new resource bonus point areas, which will give them that fuel and steel advantage. Uh, it's very exciting to see. Let's see, though, the amount of forces we've got from the Axis. 
uh, are just slightly more than we're seeing in terms of Allied forces. Allies gone heavy into getting these paratroopers sorted, but troops and boots on the ground for the Axis is just better. Really. Yeah, we've got a real, uh, I think, a split here on the on the Tommy K side. And Habibi, Habibi is, if you're seeing now his perspective, is managing the Navy a lot here, and Tommy has been microing the Army. Habibi here stepping in to sort out some uh, border gore in Malaya. Mm -hmm. Another tank here, or not, for, for the paratroopers. Let's see if they are actually uh, still paratroopers or not. Oh, the U.S. planes being still. shot down now. Uh, shot down now in the in the Java Sea, uh, losing battles to that uh, destroyer from the uh, Japanese Navy. I love this. I love that they've gone for a s uh, the fly swatter commander um, yes. to get that naval AA attack there and just do that damage. That is going to be obviously the air game above the, above the sea and the naval game because we're not using subs. The gentleman agreement is happening. It means other ship types are going to be doing convoy raiding and convoy escort. And look at this. Look at this breakdown. I really like this. I really, really like this. And they've got their main fleet on strike force. This is an excellent naval setup from our, our friends over here on um, the Axis side. Uh, one thing I would probably change, however, is to split. Actually, what have they got in this fleet? Yeah, I'd split off those light cruisers, put them on patrol, put them on do not engage, uh, and then that strike force will get used a lot more. But we are starting to see the forces spread. I don't have uh, happy feelings for these a allied troops here yeah, they're on gonna board struggle with the supply there. They're going to struggle with the supply, and they are heavily, heavily outnumbered right now. Uh, let's take a look in. There's just two divisions. One pair. Oh, there are more coming in, but they are they being convoy raided out? They are being convoy raided out by those destroyers. Beautiful, beautiful um, naval play there. Yeah, we did. And just to just to circle back, we did get a pick from the Allies. They went to for the U the U.S. Uh, tree in the, in the focus tree, and they yes. have gone down the USMC route as we suspected. And now getting towards. 100 basic medium airframes added there on yeah, the uh, Doolittle's Raiders focus. That's 100 tactical bombers coming in. Tactical bombers, okay, yeah. yeah. So, you know, as you know, uh, slightly longer range than traditional close air support. Uh, attack bombers, very useful in these kind of theaters where there's much gr greater range uh, required to operate over yeah. the whole of the uh, Southeast Asian area. Mm -hmm. And also they get production bonuses on them, or sorry, uh, yeah, so they can build them faster and replace them faster, get more of them into the field. Uh, beautiful, beautiful choice. This is now Bokuan's perspective we're seeing as he manages some of his troops on Sumatra and Java. Oh, he's switching his infantry type, um, freeing up paratroopers to be other divisions uh, so that they can hold getting the line Getting pressed really there. hard in board. They are head. really getting pressed there. And they're, they're, they're just juggling the division types around so that they can move uh, without having to pull paratroopers out of the area. Uh, assign new troops to the front. There's two divisions there. That I mean, that power drop there into near Kuching from Bakoen and landed, but there are two divisions near that that are axis that he's going to struggle to dislodge. Yeah, they're already being attacked there up in the north mm -hmm. um, <laughs> quite strongly. We do have a naval engagement here that's using the main uh, US fleet coming in. It's caught only a destroyer, though, and it, it has managed to back away. But that big fleet is patrolling now, hopefully trying to catch these one-width destroyer raiders that are the, these surface raiders and there we are i think we're actually going to see a destroyer destroyed uh, as per the name oh it just sneaks away but good we are seeing a counter navy push i'm really excited to start seeing these naval games uh we are it's a <gasps> golden spatula and boko and you sneaky sneaky people They've refit all of their destroyers to be mine layers. Ooh. And they are mine laying the Java Sea. Yes, we that was one thing Golden it. wanted to do when I, when I spoke to him. My, mine laying um, with his destroyers. Yeah, look at that. There's 31 um, tier 3 destroyers mine laying. This is going to become more and more untenable as the game goes on for the uh, Axis players to keep playing. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a harassment strategy here from the Alex yep. because their, their fleet at the moment is, is quite a lot weaker than the Axis one in surface terms. Yep. Because the uh, Axis went Japanese, they, uh, they've got the carriers, the three, mm -hmm. the three Japanese carriers. For the Allied fleet, for the viewers, is one battleship, three heavy cruisers, and 39 destroyers currently. Over on the Axis side, three carriers, one battleship, two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, 36 destroyers, and then the eight submarines they started with that are still hanging around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so one of the things about the Axis versus Allies, especially with the USF versus the Japanese, is the Japanese is a lot 
uh, stronger early game, so they need to get that early game advantage. Whereas the US um, choices tend to be a slower burn, and then you get that industry pump right at the end, which really brings you to the late game. So if Bo and Golden can hold out for long enough, which the mines will help them do, this will probably swing better in their direction. Yeah, we've However, seen that with the US, haven't we? The, the, towards the late game, they've really come strong. Some, some of their later focuses are really powerful, and they've been yep. able to make great, great ground in maps like Solemn Bloom at the end. Yes. However, if they lose uh, too many divisions trying to hold this back, that could spell disaster as well, because they just won't get enough troops and boots on the ground to then, when they do do their final uh, push at the end, you know, be able to make that. Yeah, and I think with the with the uh, with the Axis divisions now, um, as we were saying earlier on, these haven't t uh, changed the template. So I think it is this has purely been a, a a deception warfare from 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 Tommy K and I love and that. Habibi, j just changing the symbols because you know when, when it is intense in the battle and you're and you're moving back and forth, if the symbol is a tank, you think it's a tank. Yep, absolutely. And uh, one t thing to note about the Axis right now is their logistics fulfillment is shocking. They 13%. still have not taken those. Uh, trains, uh, they are going to really hemorrhage those. Yeah, we're at 100%. Oh, yeah, that's the Allies. Uh, yeah. So that's the neutral, neutral nation. 100% uh, for the Allies as well on their, on their logistics. So in a much, much better state. But of course, the Axis Navy is very strong. So actually getting those supplies through to the troops that are fighting in on the ground is yep. going to be hard, even if your fulfillment is 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you, you, you may have the convoys to meet the demand, but if they're getting sunk, then <laughs> you're going to struggle to maintain that for very long. And we currently have combat taking place on the port province on Borneo, uh, which is going to, if this if, if this falls... Oh, there's the a naval division there from the from the Axis into, into yeah, Balipapan. They're going to yeah, try and try them and on from the sea as well as on the land. And that will cut off uh, five divisions, even if these two that are holding the port escape. This is... but. Depending on how this goes, if they retreat out of it, there could be a total of seven divisions lost. Yeah, it does seem that the initial battle for Borneo oh. is perhaps going to be an Axis victory at the moment. Yes, and the thing is, is what I say is like, yes, the USF, they're a late game build. You ha you can, you've just got to slow the roll. You can't lose too many troops, though. Exactly. To do it. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's in war of attrition in some ways. Yep, absolutely. You've got to hold that line, but the people holding that line do need to survive. In, in strategies, you know where you're, you, you're. If you give up the early game a little bit to have to have a much stronger end game, you've you've got to make sure you get through that early game in, intact enough to mm -hmm. have the strength at the end. Yeah, absolutely. And say so naval invasion there, I think being set up from the Axis side to go across onto Sumatra from Malaya. Interesting, interesting. I'm still so set on seeing how these battle results are going. The, but all the units involved in this battle are getting so low on organization now. Uh, there is also Axis air superiority over this area. I wonder if that's coming from actual uh, planes on the field. Ooh, or, boat, boat or hovering over the last stand button there. Yeah, hovering over that last uh, stand button. In fact, button. he's pressed it. He's, he's pressed it. Active. This could be bad. It might be enough to turn the tide, but there is a force attack coming in from the Axis, at least from one army. They Quite nicely, the players have split their armies here. The, 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 it's not just one army group trying to do this in circumvent. It's two different armies uh, so they can uh, spread out those command point uh, allocations. And there are people cycling back into this battle. It is starting to stabilize, but it's still not the going the best. They've, just, they've got to hold that port. Yeah, if they, if they lose the port, it's all over for those divisions. It really is. They are making uh, progress on a, an attacking push to the left, but I think that's just going to pull their lines too far and ruin the supply a little bit more, making this port hold even more difficult. Exactly. But look at the mines. Look at the mines on my screen right now. It is ridiculous how many mines have been spotted in this sea tile. Look, it's just my my lord. My lord, they are going to town on the mines. Oh, do we? Th there is a statistic, statistical way, I think, to check how many mines have been laid. I'll do that. It's now a red bubble on that push. It seems like Boko and, and uh, Golden will hold there. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and mines in general, you, know, you don't realize how effective mines can be. Um, mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of yeah, ships historically yeah. were sunk by mines um, that you don't really hear about because it's not, not quite as dramatic as as ships sinking other ships. But the mines are going to have a serious impact on the Axis uh, supply lines, even though they might have the stronger fleet. Because the Allies have laid these mines, it just inhibits their ability to, to use that fleet um, to, to, to its full effect. They've laid a, they've laid a thousand mines, in fact, you found it on your screen. Yep. 
Yep, and that's only in what? How many minutes of play? Probably about five. Five, six. Yeah, 1,000 mines. Because they can only, they, they can only um, play mines at the start of war. Yes, you have to wait until war is declared to lay mines. Um, I, I could before they'd be they'd be very very overpowered. I wonder if a thousand mines is the total you can do in that season. I think I think there is a max on the, nu the number you can do in one season, uh, and they may well they, they may well have reached that. Um, yeah, they're now they're going for other. Yeah, other we got zones looking right straight now. to Balaka. We've got 169 69 there. Yeah, uh, they've been laid to there. Nice. Expanding the exp extremely nice, <laughs> um, and they're expanding their reach with the mines uh, to yeah, other sea zones. Uh, so obviously, so Malacca is quite important. That's where Singapore is, which is a major supply hub for the Axis right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think this is starting to stabilize here on Borneo. Um, how do we think this is going to shift? Are we going to see uh, the resurgence from the Allied nations coming on in? Because this is looking like a pretty yeah, stable this is, hold. Yeah, this is now. the trouble for the for the Allies here is it's stabilized and they've got their foothold, but they have to take the victory point. Yep. So working out how they how they flip this around and they put the Axis troops under pressure is difficult. <laughs> The thing about the, the islands, though, is that ultimately you are at all times vulnerable to supply because there are only three or four ports the Axis hold there on Borneo. You know, if the Allies are able to, to snipe one or two of them, mm -hmm. they can flip the supply situation around very, very quickly. And then, you know, your, your campaign somewhere like Borneo can collapse if you haven't got supply. Yeah. I'm surprised they're using these paratroopers on the front line here in, um, in Borneo. And instead of using them to, you know, do other things, uh, but it is a there is a naval invasion set up here for the final victory point for the Axis. I am intrigued to see if they actually put anything on there. They, they or want they, they want, want that three murders. three nil victory with the with the victory points. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh There's a tiny province of Allied control there. Yeah, in, is in there Philippines. anything in it, or is it already been destroyed? I think it's already been one there was one destroyer there. So obviously that was obviously I assume covering the invasion there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems the Axis have been have been live to that possibility and have prevented it from causing too many issues. I mean it's a, it's a straight crossing, so look at how fast those mines are going up. Wow. I mean how many how many how many destroyers do they have deployed there? Just one. There's thir there's 30, 30, 30, 31 destroyers just mines. Yeah, that that this destroyer here's being used for vision on these units. Ah, okay. Uh, and yeah, there's now those mines are just Wow, wow! I I wish I like that is uh, you, you love watching numbers go up like that is I that mean is a lot of line green. go up and yeah. green numbers are green yeah. so you know it's it's in d instant dopamine and you can see every mine is a point one percent uh sorry every ten mines is a point one percent on that modifier there of our mine coverage increases by our ship amount impact look at that that is that is, that is shooting up. Yeah, they're going to hit that cap so quickly on all of these uh, areas. And it's just going to make playing that navy for the Axis real difficult. I wonder if mine removal is going to be on the cards for the Axis, if they've refit any of their ships. No, it's currently still uh, strike force and convoy raiding. I wonder if mine sweeping will come out from them or not, or if it's too late to try and uh, counter this play. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the Axis are, st are still sitting at, um, in a in a pretty strong position navally. Uh, if you look over to the Axis viewpoint here, it's all green uh, everywhere, despite despite the mines. Um, but there are, you know, they're, they're, these these mines have have sunk one ship just just outright. Something you, you can see the penalties there from the enemy mines. Your invasion uh, penalties up. Your, your your naval speed goes down. So your ability for your fleet to move to where you need them to react to a naval invasion or another fleet sallying is reduced as a result and the accident chance there goes up as well. So it's it's just uh, a, you know it's it's a process of attrition um, mm -hmm. having these mines here even though the eyes can't quite compete but they might be able to with later with later focuses get like zero percent logistics there for the for the axis as well now. Yeah up they are down in to kinds zero. of trouble. And they, 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 they they're trying to use trucks. Yeah they're trying to use trucks and also they are currently building minesweeping destroyers. So they have designed a destroyer to do the minesweeping. They're seeing how much that it's uh, causing them an issue and they've switched their naval production to do so. Also, I want to point out just uh, some things I'm noticing on the production screen here. Rocket artillery. Rocket artillery. There's a, there's a big soft attack bonus, I think, from rocket artillery. Absolutely. You know, we saw it in some of the games yesterday. Yeah, it's really potent. And honestly, rocket artillery is also really good in combination with Marines when trying to land on those ports. Yeah. Support rocket artillery on Marines. There's, there's a r and obviously on this map, 
soft attack is king because there aren't that many tanks. Well, not any tanks, in fact. I don't think I haven't seen them so far. Here so we have the everything is very soft well. and takes a lot of soft attack. Yes. yes. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a very soft attack based <laughs> game. I wonder if we see flamethrower tanks because they also get bonuses in jungle. They um, do indeed, yeah, um, flamethrowers. Yeah, absolutely. A counterpoint, let's have a look at the production screen of the allies. Again, I think we're going to see uh, the, what's it called, the meta plane. No, this is CAS, uh, transport planes, artillery. It's a smaller build screen. We do have some cruisers in production here. Uh, is this a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser? This is a heavy cruiser. So it's kind of kind of blank heavy cruiser uh, they'll probably refit it once it's produced uh, and then we have these destroyers which I'm pretty sure are the mine layers that they've got going on uh, no one is just a support ship the other is a mine layer I'm guessing these are mine layers being produced um, and then they're going to refit them once all the mines have been placed yeah and over on the axis side uh, with production trucks at the top, they are in, in, in great need of trucks, and they need AT to have six. Uh, and, th and they're losing a bunch of bombing as well from the enemy. So, real uh, logistics striking here from the from the um, Allied side. Trains, infantry equipment, uh, and then uh, plane m meta plane, as the design has been called, um, which is a uh, machine guns and the fighters we've seen this yeah. before, heavy machine guns, uh, rocket artillery, uh, regular artillery, more planes down here, CAS, and um, then support equipment. And then some destroyers being built. These uh, these mine sweeping ones we've we've just talked about. Um, so yeah, a pretty a pretty balanced slate from both from both sides. Lots of different things. This map uh, does force you to build a wider variety of equipment. Yes, absolutely. You, you, in in the Rhine map we've seen that you build three or four things plus aircraft mm -hmm. at most. Um, whereas here you've you've got a lot of different threats to uh, to adjust to, and you have absolutely. to build a wide variety of stuff, uh, stuff that you wouldn't normally see. The Allied Navy is about to get its power spike as they are currently doing the Lords of Midwave focus, which adds uh, Devastator planes, which are your aircraft carrier planes, more carrier planes. Uh, the two carriers mm. added to their fleet. Um, so that, that, that might the be the point at which the Allies can, can take the naval yeah. game because they, they have the mines already. Because they also get Dugout Dug, which is invasion defense, exactly. entrenchment speed, and amphibious invasion speed, and a bigger special forces cap. Yeah, it means that obviously if, if they get a, a strong fleet and they want to engage the Axis fleet, they're going to be doing it in territory where there's mines on their side, mm -hmm. which means that the enemy fleet is going to have a much tougher time reacting to your moves with its, with its speed penalty and they'll be suffering attrition from, from damage from mines. They've noticed the supply issues down here for the Axis and the Allies are actually going on the offensive right now. This Northern Army not being contested because it still has supply, but these Southern troops here from the Axis are having to pull back. Uh, I, uh, I can't switch the, the nation fast enough to have a look. Look at them. They're all being forced into this, uh, this corner of Borneo here, which if they lose this port, they're it's going to be in huge trouble. They're with really going to be the in next trouble. And this port could is a be, long way away. Yeah, it's, an, it's really a long way away, and we might be seeing an attempted encirclement of this port. It's going to really put some pressure on. There's some blocking going on in the north here from the eyes. This is a really good play from Golden and uh, Bo here. Yeah, this this is this is the 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 key moment here on Borneo. Port's fallen. Port's there fallen. Is a port's fallen. The, the Axis here cannot stand up to the Allied offensive. Mm -hmm. They're going to cut off one division, I think down there perhaps, or oh, they're reinforcing no, it. Oh, it's it's oh it's it's, it's retreating. retreating. It's into the pocket across, it's retreating across the into river. The they're going to cut yes. them both off. It's going to be three or four of them. It's going to be four of them, and they've got to move fast. They've got, got to pin, move. Then he's got to pin them. He's got to. It, oh no, oh, he's, he's got it. He got it. He's got it. Four, four divisions, four divisions in the, in, and, in now, and now the combat has begun. This is real devastating for the they Axis, for Tommy and Habibi. <sighs> and thi thi this is, you know, you Bo and Golden's plan know, coming to that? fruition here. Your They've ridden out the storm. They've got their supplies in order. They've got the mines laid. Absolutely. And now the Axis are really feeling the struggle. That's still at only 36% logistic fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Still struggling with trucks. Um, they've lost eight to any bombing in the last 30 days. They're well short of what they need. Whether they should just be switching over to use, uh, to not use trucks would, would increase would increase that. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's looking much better for the Allies here, especially with those carriers still to come. Yes. 
They are probably seconds now away from being uh, spawned in. In fact, I am correct. Literally one, one day, day. Literally one day. That this game is, sense. Is <laughs> there it is. 250 carrier aircraft or yeah. are, are, spa are spawned with these, yeah. which is a huge number of planes. Yeah, they don't even need to use the carriers themselves. They could just pull the planes off of the carriers. Absolutely. Yeah. The, one, the one thing the carriers, as we saw yesterday, you have to be really careful with your fuel unless you've got a very, very large oil production. Because mm -hmm. uh, well, they, that's will, changed they now. will drink it very quickly. That's changed now because we rebalanced the amount of fuel on this map. Right, so they do have enough fuel. Yes, it, so they should have enough. Uh, there is a lot more uh, fuel available around the map. Oh yeah, I mean, so the, I mean, um, the uh, allies here who have now got the American flag are now uh, look at are sitting at 136 surplus oil. Yeah, so they're, they're, they've got the, the fuel, fuel might actually not be a problem now for them. They can they can use those carriers to to full effect. Absolutely, which means they are a big threat on this battlefield. The Borneo encirclement has been completed. Three divisions. There goes the head pop. There goes the head. I would love for the sound effect of like the M1 Grand click, like the 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 the, 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 the chamber emptying of an M M1 <laughs> Grand to, to go every time I see that little head. Yeah, so you can pop. see. Yeah, so you can see Allied fleet now there off the go. coast, off the coast of uh, Borneo there with the carriers oh. providing the air cover. Yes, using them as a floating airfield. This is a very understated tactic for the carriers. Literally having them broke off, not on any missions themselves, but you're using them as an airfield to su uh, to support invasions and attacks on areas that you can't reach without. A. Yeah, they're still looking uh, at red air at the moment in Borneo, but that might that might turn around. They're having to, they're flying from a long way away. The like ground based mm -hmm. planes are having to come up from Java to fly over Borneo. Yep. Um, Carrier is now heading around the other side of the island. Yeah, heading they're heading to, to the VP South to the China VP. Sea. So there's a real sort of squeeze here on the Axis position yeah, by the Allies now, both Nate from the sea and on land. Oh, I wonder what's going through the mind of the Axis players right now uh, as we see this. It is uh, a wonder. I, 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 I can imagine Tommy is just going to be stood there going, oh, I need to micro this more, need to micro this more. Habibi is also, one of the things I noticed about Habibi in his play yesterday, he's a very good mindset player. He really understands the game, but he gets flustered when the micro becomes too much for him. Yes. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is now Tommy Case. perspective you're seeing on screen. You can see how they're reacting to their uh, setbacks in Borneo. Uh, rushed yeah, upon uh, divisions the, the here, and there's a naval division coming on Batavia here. Batavia, is it going to be there enough? There it is defended, waiting. it is defended. But is this uh, going to be enough? Those are understrength divisions. Those are understrength divisions, but it's looking green right now for the Japanese. No, nope. they stopped that invasion. They nope. stopped it. They, they realized they he didn't. I mean, he must have been hoping they weren't there, Yeah, that it, that it was undefended. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Allies really just pumped out these divisions now. I will say, though, they have stretched the line a little too thin right now for their supply line. The Axis are now at 100% uh, logistic fulfillment. Exactly, I'm yes. assuming partially is a function of being pushed back, and they're not using trucks anymore for their supplies. Yep. I think this is a good bet. This isn't over yet. They still hold those VPs. It's now just about can the Allies get enough to ramp up the, the aggressiveness they have. Also, just as a note, why the Allies are in such a strong position. They have the extra uh, fuel from both Sulawesi and also Sumatra, which give a fuel bonus, as well as Java being the big fuel economy. The Axis aren't without fuel, though. They do have uh, fuel from Borneo and from the Philippines. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting point of view. The um, Axis now having um, the doing, doing their final indus industry focuses. They have still got some focuses up on the Japanese tree uh, that they haven't done yet. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's a Tokyo Express on which gives them uh, escort efficiency and naval invasion planning uh, bonuses. But for them, it's it's a, it's a stabilization process now. And yep. as as the, the front line has advanced in Borneo, it's becoming harder for the Allies to continue advancing because now they're the ones with the stretch supply lines. They Absolutely. have just got another port on the east coast of Borneo there, which will give them more supply. And it's a, a, a real difficult task the, the key task now for the Axis, very important, is as they lose, they, d they don't get pushed completely off the island. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't keep a foothold, you then go a naval invade, and that, and that is a lot harder than trying to push on when you're already established on land. Absolutely. I will say, though, time is running yeah, out 13 for 13 minutes left. 13 minutes left. The Allies have just got the Arsenal Democracy bonus, so their industry is going to be pumping. They're going to be able to get the supply rolling very soon so the axis really need to bite down on the stick and really call what raise this wound that they've got going on that it's 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 panic stations now they need to support this they need to also though not overstack so they eat up their supply again uh and just try to look for an opening try to uh, squeeze the attention away from um bow and uh gold 
one of the things that Tommy kept saying is uh, it's it's triggering the the movement and the reaction. So throwing some divisions elsewhere to just try and trigger them to to turn their focus away while they stabilize could be a good bet. Spam out some one wi uh, two width divisions and just flood areas because I believe the Axis still have that naval control. They do, so they could just start peppering the lines he elsewhere. Li he likes to stay active, Tommy. Yeah. The activity is, is a real buzzword of his in terms of just keep whatever situation you're in, keeping the pressure or asking your opponent to react to your move, making sure that you're busy, not, not sitting there and waiting to be attacked again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely here. It is wonderful to see, though. It's, it's really nice to see it and see if he can put it, put the, uh, you know, put the skill where he's been talking about. Absolutely, it, yeah. Just to touch back on, on what you're saying about the, the production of the Allies, the Arsenal Democracy of Focus, if, you, if you're not aware, that gives huge bonuses in terms of uh, stabi stability, 15%, construction speed, 15%, efficiency on production cap, 10%, the growth of efficiency is up 10%, production, the base it starts at is up 10%, mm -hmm. raw factory output, 15%, dockyard, 25%, and from the stability, you will have got an additional factory output bonus anyway from that going up. So it's a, it is a really big buff to the allied production. Also a negative c consumer, uh, consumer and, yeah, goods and, le and less consumer good demand, yeah. so more it is available to produce it more It is things. a spike. It is a Th huge th spike. This is, this is the evolution of the of the allied US game, mm. where, where yeah, they, they really come strong at the end, and they can really just hammer you with more equipment than you can produce. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look, though, at Tommy K's perspective. We talk about this man being, uh, being able to, like, his mindset is to uh, to trigger people with micro, but I think his micro is being triggered by the enemy. I think it, that stat is being used against him. He is currently microing a lot of fronts. He seems to be in full command of this Borneo area. Uh, he has stabilized it a bit. He's changing around that supply. I mean, that trucks, but he's, zero he's got zero percent again, and he's l and they're losing fuel. Mm, I mean, uh, only eight six days, but this is looking worrying. Why is their fuel so bad? Is it, is it because of again they have this? Oh, they're on anti-submarine. Uh, right now, though, sorry, they're, they're trying to remove those mines. I, I, I really think they need to just uh, s scatter some naval invasions, start pumping out literal uh, two widths, and just go go ham on trying to trying to draw the focus away from Bow and Golden. Because the more that Arsenal democracy ticks, the Absolutely. harder Speaking it's going to be. Speaking of going, going uh, Golden and Boat, let's switch over to see how they're getting on. His Bow Golden's perspective, zooming in there on the Philippines. Mm -hmm. He's got another naval invasion coming in. They have got a little foothold there south of they Manila, do. opening up another front. Just you know, not letting the Axis settle, keep you know, opening an, adi an additional area to fight in on their territory. These are attacks that the the Allies are, are carrying out. It's a it's a sign in, in any game like this that one side is in control when they feel they have the division spare to launch a new offensive. Yes, absolutely. They, they don't feel like they have to throw them into Borneo to ensure that they, they're going to win. Mm -hmm. They can strike a strike at a new place of their choosing. They have the initiative. Yep. One of the Borneo front, front lines is looking a little rough. Tommy there, I think, is holding on by the skin of his teeth in the, in, in the southwest of Borneo. It's, it's, it's the green bubbles are currently in favor of the uh, allies, but it's, it's going to be close. He's last standing now. He might lose these divisions. And do you know what? If he does lose this area, what this will allow the allies to do, they'll be able to build an air base on this southern part of the island and have full control of it. Currently, the uh, Axis have green air over Borneo, uh, but that could flip if there is a, an airbase close to the center of that Absolutely. air. Absolutely. Simply as a function of the fact that the Allied planes are having to fly from from Java to, to get over Borneo mm -hmm. in the first place. Even though they have quite a lot of planes, That's the Axis are flying rough. From, from Borneo itself, so it's so much easier. And that is a sick event for the uh, Axis general. Yeah, who was sat in this, uh, in this southwestern part. Uh, it's also the jungle rat who is really decent in this. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a real setback because yeah. you know each each level of skill is going to is a five percent bonus of the stats of divisions under his command. Yeah, and lo losing half of that, it's not like it's not a enormous modifier, but mm -hmm. this, these are fine margins, and it, these all these battles are being decided on you know, on the wire really close. So a, a, a small chance event like that can have a really big impact on how these battles go. Especially with how quick these games are. There is eight minutes left. The Axis need to hold these two victory points for eight minutes. 
but the time is running out for them as well. They are losing that supply. They are losing that energy. They are losing those troops, and they are losing that equipment. I want to see what the equipment deficit is like. Not many negatives outside of fighters right now, which is really good for them. If they can just keep that up, keep keep enough to keep all of their guys supplied, it will do them well. However, if you look at the allies, the Arsenal democracy is raging. There's a huge lead on infantry equipment. But they don't have the victory points. They don't eight have mi the Eight points. minutes left. It is still currently an Axis victory. Yeah, Even though we've, we've spent the last 20 minutes with the Allies playing really well and, and coming really strong, they haven't got the second victory point. Manila and um, in Borneo are still both held by the Axis. Yeah, absolutely. Still seeing fleet engagements everywhere. I want a battle big there over in Manila. Is that a counter attack yes, from the Americans? It, I, or is it it's a, it's a, a, a four-way assault or three-way assault onto Manila? And it is it's green. green. It is green. Th this They're going to the take that need. victory point. The, oh, it's turning red, though. It's going to be on the cusp. It's going to be about the air. The Allies do have aerial control over the Philippines, which means that encirclement is going to be rough. It is going to start having the supply issues. Yes, they might not win on this push, but they've just last standed, which means if they keep up the uh, support, keep their, uh, their reinforcements going in, they are logistically fit and ready to keep up that fight. This is why the Arsenal democracy is such a scary factor, because you, don't, it, you can do those hyper-aggressive pushes towards the end. Yeah, and you've got the um, Amer American fleets off the, off the coast there of the Philippines uh, doing mm -hmm. its best to aid uh, their comrades on the ground but they're not quite able to get hold of Nilla just Look yet. at this. Is this a carrier? This is a carrier doing convoy raiding right now. I mean, that's I mean that's <laughs> interesting. It's interesting, but it's destroying these destroyers. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, that's... I mean, if you've got it and that's what you need to do, you need to do... Like, everyone is scraping the barrel of what they can do to try and change these situations. Tommy is pulling back. Or is this what Habibi is pulling back? One of them is pulling back on the axis. They have pulled to a full back line. They are getting out of dodge. They are shorting, the, shortening their line and just holding around the Brunei VP. They are worried. They know that they've only got six, well, they roughly know that they've only got six minutes left and they need to hold, but they are falling back. And the manpower drain right now, only 41,000 manpower left for the Axis and 34 for the Allies. It's actually lower for the Allies right now. So manpower is going to start being a factor. As soon as that hits zero, some of these divisions aren't going to be able to refill properly. Time is running out. Supplies are running out. It is going to come down to the wire. It really is. And, you know, just look at the uh, supply map mode here for the Axis. It, it's bad. In Borneo, bo I think both sides now, because the Allies have come so far from their uh, initial victory points. Mm -hmm. They're both struggling with supply now on this front line. Uh, both sides really at it with supply. Over in the Philippines, uh, Manila is still held by the Axis. Troops around here, they don't quite have what they need to take it. They have got an airbase now in Manila, a plane's base there. Um, may, maybe, you know, a big effort with on the air with cast damage could, could, could maybe swing that battle. There is one in progress now. They are forced attacking once again into Manila, but it's gone red again. Axis just lost off almost uh, so 34 planes um to some retreating heavy cruisers the heavy cruisers almost died to mines they were on such low health but it, there was a 34 planes in this mod is a lot that is a big industrial investment that is a big aerial investment that's just gone into the bottom of the ocean switch over here we'll see uh, habibi's perspective on the access side he's 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 been very i think they're very naval focused in this game yep. so far tommy really taking a lead on the land stuff yeah, uh, managing research there, or I like that. I mean, that, that I think that's a really good way to divide command on this. Uh, on this, especially as how uh, the naval uh, is a big part of this map. Um, yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing naval that you don't want to rush. Yes, you, you don't want to be trying to manage and micro land at the same time. You need to like have a considered head with the navy and mm -hmm. make sure you've got it all set up exactly right. Because it can be quite easy to, to misclick with the navy and assign the fleet to the wrong location or do the wrong mission. Yep. And then Absolutely. your whole your whole plan's un undone from that point. And it's also slightly about um, <laughs> slightly about um, there we go. There we, there's the uh, Japanese uh, icon flip. That means they've just done uh, modern uh, they've just finally put Yamato Supreme in, uh, which is their invasion speed modifiers and it gives them some more XP, etc. Um, I feel like it's a really delayed um, focus on here. I the, think problem, the problem with that as well is that they're, they're doing the focus now to do uh, modern Bushido, yep. uh, which gives them a bunch of uh, uh, recruitable pop, mm -hmm. amongst other things. We've got four minutes left, so yeah, you know, it's it's so late in the day to, to do that. And they're out there, well, they're down to 16,000 manpower. They're desperately holding around Brunei still. Yeah, and unfortunately they've had to pull back, so they're just two tiles wide now, which means they're just going to come under repeated assault 
I also, think, they're going to get the bonus I don't, from surrounding It's them. bad, though, because the Allies have, have had to move, come further away from their supply bases. Very true. That's it's, very, I very th true. I think it might have been a calculated choice, because if they maintained the line they had before and they were broken, the, it's, they have it already in low supply, so it's, it's hard to recover. Here, uh, the Athens are in pretty decent supply right around their port. The Allies have had to come so far away from their from their supplies. They're all in low supply. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be harder to come. This is a, it's like a last stand situation in both Manila and in Borneo, the Axe is still holding on to those victory points. Yep, and also command power right now is fleeting for both uh, both sides. Um, just 20 for the Jap uh, for the Axis and 8 for the Allies. It, it, that means they're not going to be able to hit those last stand buttons very often, so it is going to be down to basic combat. And a small counter-attack was just tried yeah, there. Yeah, Manila here, the yeah, Japanese have landed some troops uh, just south east of yeah, Manila. Yeah, taken away that airfield from the Allies. Yeah, which is which is which is cut off one of the main routes that the Allies would have had to to you know really put the pressure on Manila would have been would have been uh, to use all their cast. So close. We're coming down to the wire. Two minutes. Uh, we are going to see these guys flip. Which uh, side they're playing as well, I believe, after this. Or we, I mean, just had the, um, the uh, Japanese general who's overseeing Borneo is, is ill. Oh he's, he's, no. he's, he's at that event. So his bonuses are down. And that's, and that's a, well, it's a two, two squad defense, but logistics and supply are all affected. Have they just split as a result? Mm, yeah, they have. They split, they split in half, but that's a, a serious modifier impact. Absolutely. Right at the worst possible time with only 1 minute 58 seconds on the clock. Yeah. Can they hold out? It looks like they're, they, they're going to be pretty good shape to do so at the moment, but whether there is something else they can do with air or... or the air yeah, game they, is, uh, they have got an air base now, the Allies, in Borneo, actually. Yep, and they are being able to contest it. It is, it is a... I think it just... It, axes are... Still red air, though. They, 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 yeah. they can't get green air. It, it was yellow for a moment Those there. fighters, I mean, I mean, they've only got a, a handful of planes deployed here, but the 300 Axis fighters have just meant that the Axis have never been able to get air superiority yes, over, absolutely. over Borneo. Absolutely. The, the real thing here I want to also touch on, now that we're heading to the end, we're going to see these guys switch sides, right? Right. So... Are we going to see the same faction come out, or are we going to see something different from Tommy? Uh, is, are they not going to go U.S. Marine? Or are we going to still see the uh, Japanese? Yeah, I, I think I think it's quite likely they'll still go for the Allies. Yes, for, 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 for the U.S. on the on the Allied side. Yep. I I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe a different Axis one, but then again, the Germans are strong with submarines. Yes, so and those are gentlemen. Those, those are not allowed. So. It may yeah, well be yeah. the Japanese. I mean, the Italians do have a, an interesting navy as well. Do they? Okay, yeah. well, it could be an Italian pick then. Now, if we have, we've not seen anyone pick Italy so no, far. Not at all. Event. But also, not just on a uh, faction level, but also on a uh, focus level on what VP they go for. We saw the Allies go straight for this Java one, this and now really this is for Manila here yeah. from, from Bowen Golden. He's throwing everything they can at They've Manila. Got, at this it's point. the last 30 seconds. The frustration from Bo there. They're like, we need to try and get into this VP because they need it to win. Because they've, 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 they've stripped the, the Borneo front of all of its troops, throwing everything at Manila at this point. Yeah, they they really no have. manpower left. No manpower. 14 left. seconds. It, it, no, both sides. They've gone no for manpower. It. And that might be that, might that be GG. I, I think, think they've GG. Yeah, they GG'd out. G that will be a victory that. for Tommy. Team for Tommy has won the first of this leg, this two v two show match that we are doing with losers plus Tommy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, a good game. I mean, a it really, really solid. Close. Game. I mean, one of the one of the closest we've had so far in this event, mm -hmm. right down to the wire. I mean, Tommy and Habibi were, were clinging on, mm. having effect. Lost the lost the battle of Borneo there, and largely forced to defend a tiny little bastion at the, at the yeah, end there. Absolutely, and it looks rough on Borneo and on Malin Manila for the Axis yeah. on multiple occasions. I really want to see how they flip from this because also for for some of these people, it's kind of almost their first experience. Well, it's their first experience working yeah. together. So they have a better idea of how they work as a team now. But also, right, that's not the case for Golden and, and Bo. They play a lot. But uh, there's there's just a lot going on. However, we should probably throw this back. We uh, should. Back to the studio. I mean, here's something I don't think most people watching the game expected. And I realize I'm throwing shade. Uh, but our winners... It's over, Bo Bros. It's Without over. I want the world to know exploiting <laughs> never wins. We have tactics, we have micro, we have gameplay. They have a bunch of mind laying. Developers, I know you're watching. I know you're watching. 
and it doesn't pay off. Skill pays off. Skill pays off. Right, but we're now you bonded forever. We God. are. We are. Bonded we are. Forever. Uh, one of the things I was upstairs watching the game, uh, talking to Zankis, and he was like, "99 percent chance that Bo wins this." 99% chance Dankus is just a cheap copy of me. And that is um, the truth. And the truth has been seen here. The 1% has won. Mm -hmm. And that is the facts. <laughs> Everyone underestimates matter. Tommy. It's so common. They underestimate Tommy, but he is actually such a good microer. I just was doing the macro. I was doing the Navy. He just was microing Borneo, doing some crazy plays, stopped the paratroopers, did the hold. We split the armies, did the field marshal planning. Too easy. No, but all jokes aside, I, did, I, I felt the rust. Uh oh, of all these years of playing single player, <laughs> I did a lot of mistakes. He was like, Tommy, what are you doing? I, d I did a lot of micro mistakes, but in the end, uh, it was still enough to take it away from the Danish and uh, the Americans. And I'm, I mean, I think all of us here are grateful for it. Uh, regardless of <laughs> what side you were cheering on for, I thought that was an excellent game. Thank you guys so much for showcasing the uh, final and third map.